Hello, Alistair here in New York City. I'm a designer and the executive creative director of Fitch. Thank you very much for joining me for this talk now. Our global CEO, Jane Geraghty, started this 24 hour extraordinary broadcast much earlier today in Sydney. And subsequently, it's moved on from Sydney to Hong Kong to Mumbai, Dubai, West to Paris, London, and now on the East Coast. Here I am in New York City, and later on today, it'll <coughs> finish in San Francisco. Let's make a start. Hopefully you can see that on screen now. This talk is about shopping and the transformational role that brands and retailers need to play. I believe that great retail sits at the crossroads of both commerce and culture. Before I project the future, let's start by going back in time into the history of shopping across three eras. First, we had the market stalls and shops owned and operated by mom and pop. They served you over counter. And the shopkeeper knew all the customers by name and they could almost predict what you're going to order, a bit like a modern day algorithm. It was highly personable. However, it was not scalable beyond two to three shops because the shopkeeper couldn't literally spread themselves thinly enough. The first American supermarket opened about 100 years ago in Chicago, bizarrely called a store called Piggly Wiggly. The innovation here was that the customers actually shopped for themselves. They had their own shopping baskets. These organized retail stores were operationally led and highly scalable. These and other chain stores became the cookie cutters for malls and shopping centers in the 70s and 80s. The principal negative being that staff had low engagement with the customers. E-commerce clearly is closely entwined with the history of the internet. By the way, Amazon launched in 1994 while I was still at university. Back then, e-commerce was a PC at home and the in-store shopping experience was completely different with different pricing. These technologies have developed and we've started to use increasingly complex industry phrases like multi-channel, offline, online, O2O and omni-channel. From mature retailer, for, here, for example, here in the US, the data, if you like the plumbing, became very complex, complex to connect all these different access points together. For most retailers and brands, their digital transformation program is simply about joining all these different pipes together so that the brand has one single view of the customer. In this image here, Walmart in some cities in the US can now deliver direct to your kitchen fridge as the homeowner views and communicates remotely out of the home via their mobile. I think that's quite amazing, the transformation over those 25 years. For the last 18 months, we've started to enter the next era of shopping, but simply mobile first. Let me be really clear. This is not a subset of Omnichannel at all. It simply gives the customer one, their mobile phone, as the single access point into the brand, commerce, experience, and shopping environments. Today, the strongest tactile relationship most people have is with their mobile phone. So a bit of what I'm going to describe is going to be quite technical. I still believe that humans, as in staff, are still extremely important in stores as well. But let's focus in on the technology. You might be thinking that mobile first means the death of bricks and mortar physical stores. No, it's quite the opposite. It really means that we need to be designing mobile first retail strategies. So let's look at eight ways that mobiles are being used today in store beyond the obvious price checking and coupons. Starting top left, it's my map and compass. Here, the maps can convert a shopping list into directions via an AR overlay map in store. It helps the retailer read my mind before I arrive. Predictive shopping that's powered by AI will be the central feature on mobile first connecting to stores. It's my voice control, voice remote control. As you know, virtually half of all searches today are voice based and the share of ear in, in store is the next battleground. It helps me personalize selection. I think you all have seen this IKEA as the best example of mobile AR, where you can personalize your yellow sofa and chair in your store or in your home. And to finish, it can also be my shopping basket and wallet, 
A great example is Alibaba's Huma store in China, which is best in class for collecting your your purchases. You go around, you pay for them, you walk out with nothing, and all the products get delivered home inside 20 minutes. It can also be my queue or line, as we say in the US, jumper. Nike's app is amazing, and you can get any product product delivered direct to my fitting room or to check out at any point. The shopper is an absolute control. It's also my eyes via a surrogate shopper. This this newish Chinese shopping trend, purchasing remotely while viewing in-store live streaming of products. It's been enormous through COVID when the stores were closed in Q4, Q1. And finally, I want to be part of the story. Shoppers increasingly wanting to be participant and not just spectators in store. Here, bit of a joke, this is a shelfie, not a selfie. There's a little film here of uh, Adidas, uh, one of our clients, and we've created for a number of brands, AR in store experiences, here launching a new football soccer boot. For this film, it's demonstrated with an iPad, but it's actually designed for our smartphones. We create these immersive experiences that focus on the benefits and uses exclusive content in the store, thus creating new reasons to visit the store. You can see there as the device move over, lots of new rich content where you create your own experiences, your own stories. So mobile first has been unfolding the last 18 months or so. COVID-19 has clearly accelerated this. However, it's not triggered this retail transformation. Here in America over the last eight weeks, tens of millions of shoppers have experienced their very first order online and home delivery of grocery. Now that they've realized how easy it is, they're not going to go back to their old ways. The key question most retailers and brands are asking, what percentage of these new shopping behaviors will stick post-pandemic? I believe it'll be the majority. We're all hyper aware of touching things at the moment, and it's our number one fear today. And all retailers are asking these questions of, if the last 10 years has been about hyper tactility in store, how do we shift to a contactless environment? We've also been creating these multi-sensorial experiences, and now we're almost in this sensory deprivation mode. What's the answer? We really believe that, that mobile will become the remote control for most in-store retail, banking, food menus, and most services. It will be gesture-led and not touch going forward. Currently, all the retailers have had or having their stores close, closed are focused on getting them open so they can get them up and running and making money. This phase has all been operationally led with floor signage, screens, brass door handles, and contactless payments. At Fitch, we're now focused on the next phase, developing the quality of experience for the shopper once all the basics are in place, all the hygienic basics are in place. Brands who go above and beyond will be the ones that we remembered. It's not necessarily about the biggest initiative, but considering the details that mean the most to consumers. The so mobile first is an excellent tool for shopping. However, too many brands have gone through a reductive decade. By that, I mean that they've been removing all the friction points on the path to purchase, to the point where consumers are now whizzing past without seeing other temptations or offers. Here, a great example is Starbucks Mobile Order and Pay. It's a perfect example of saving time with the brand. Having worked so hard to strip out all the friction from this experience, a lot of brands have been stripping out the emotions as well. Being pain-free is table stakes these days, and has become the new baseline for all brands. Brands need to play an increasingly relevant role in contemporary culture, creating sticky moments where people want to spend time with the brand. And to complement Starbucks, the best in class for spending time is the roasteries, as you see on screen. I'm proud to say there's Fitch will part of the innovation process behind it. There's now, so much product is now going to go direct to our homes. Uh, less products will be required on the in-store on the actual shelves. So I believe that physical stores will need to become more purpose-led experiences. What do I mean by that? Well, retail's been around, always been about what I can buy from you. And going forward, it's increasingly going to be what I can achieve with you. A great example of achieving with 
a brand would be Nike. They're relatively new house of innovations in both Shanghai and here in Fifth Avenue in New York City are the most amazingly personalized experiences. You can customize anything, the highly creative, and the Nike mobile unlocks all these amazing extra services in store. So with Nike, it can support me to get a high level of fitness while, lo while looking street sharp to boot. So to conclude, I've run you through a number of thoughts there, but the primary one is that I believe that mobile first would become the macro retail strategy, if you like, the fourth era of retail. The role for retailers, they need to adapt to more purpose-led experiences, as opposed to merely product in a space, and brands need to play a vital role in contemporary culture. Um, thank you very much for your time today. There's been three, three, four hundred people. Um, in 40 minutes time, there'll be the next talk. It's by a peer, a friend of mine called Colin Lamb, and he's doing a talk entitled Learnings from Remote Working that Transform Culture. So very much about internal organizational culture and the workplace environment. He'll be on in at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I really hope you join that. Thank you very much again, and goodbye. <laughs>